Justice lead coincides with our 2024 and political leads. It's a safe bet that the subject is one Donald Trump. The New York Times Maggie Haberman is, is here with me to share her insights into Trump world in a way that only she can really. Well, thanks. I, I think. I appreciate that, Jake. Uh, it's okay. So Trump keeps trying to rewrite the history of what happened on January 6th. So I want to uh, play uh, a recording of what he told ABC News uh, Chief Washington Correspondent John Carl for Carl's uh, new book. It's called Tired of Winning. Donald Trump and the end of the grand old party. So this is about Trump's supposed desire to go to the U.S. Capitol during the riot. Take a listen. You told them you were going to go up to the Capitol. Were you just... I was, no, I was going to, and the Secret Service said, you can't. And then by the time I would have, and then when I got back, I saw, I wanted to go back. I was thinking about going back during the problem to stop the problem, doing it myself. Secret Service didn't like that idea too much. So, so what? And I could so, have done that, and you know what? I would have been very well received. Don't forget, the people that went to Washington that day, in my opinion, they went because they thought the election was rigged. That's why they went. So, there's so much to like. There's a lot there. There's, <laughs> there's a lot there. First of all, they thought the election was rigged because he had been lying to them about for months about the election being rigged. Um, I love also how he calls the insurrection. A problem, the problem. Um, but he never really says what he was going to do there. Do you know what he was going to do there? No, and I find it slight. Look, I, I do believe that he in wanted to march initially uh, before the riot broke out. Yeah. I think that is true. All of us have had reporting on that. We had reporting on it in real time. Uh, the idea that he thought that he could go back because he was thinking he could maybe make it better. I don't know why he wouldn't have just said more of that on Twitter at the right. time if that was actually yeah, that's uh, revisionism. What, he, what he was thinking. So I think one piece of that is real and one piece of that uh, sounds uh, not at all comporting with anything else we know. I, I, I wish, I, I really want to know what he would, thought he was going to do. I, I don't think that he necessarily had that thought before he was articulating it to John Carl. It's, I don't know that we will ever know the answer. I actually was struck by that audio though where he says, in my opinion, in the middle of it. Well, no, because he's been he's been leaning on, in my opinion, right. a little bit more recently uh, since the indictment. Oh, since in my opinion, they yeah. went because they thought the yeah. election was rigged. That's yeah. why they and went. And I'm a little, I'm struck that he was using that language that early, because that interview was in 2021, I believe. Oh, in my opinion, interesting. In my opinion. And he calls it the problem. Right, well, it's, uh, that's, the that, problem. That, is a, that is a euphemism, yeah. It was. So related to that, the federal judge presiding over his election subversion case. Um, today denied his legal team's request to remove languages in the indictment about the January 6th riot. They heard it's inflammatory. Do you think any of these cases are going to go to trial before the election? I do. I think that the, uh, well, so something has happened in the last couple of hours. One is that Fawny Willis in Fulton County, Georgia, uh, has asked for the trial to be set, I believe, on August 5th in that case. What's fascinating about that is it suggests that she thinks that the documents case in Florida is not going to happen at all before the election because there's going to be a hearing on that in March about whether to move it. I do think that the federal trial on election subversion charges is going to happen in March or April at the latest and I think we will see several months of a trial. I don't think people have quite gotten their heads around what it's going to look like when there is the, the potentially the presumptive front runner for the yeah. Republic nomination, Republican nomination sitting in a courtroom every day. You have to attend as a criminal. Yeah, in March or April? In March or April for many, many weeks going and this forward. is the uh, this is the classified documents case? No, that's the J6 case. That's it's the January 6th case. That's the, that is the January 6th case before Tanya Chutkin in Washington. The documents case, which is Eileen Cannon, which is in Fort Pierce. Oh, that one, that one, that she's, one she's I, delaying. I believe she will delay okay. that past the election. If the Georgia one goes ahead, and I'm skeptical of that, in this time frame of August, then that would basically mean Trump is on trial the entire general election. And that's an astonishing thing to get your head around. Uh, yesterday, a New York appeals court lifted the gag order that's supposed to keep Trump from talking mm -hmm. about uh, the court staff, like the clerk, mm -hmm. et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, for the ongoing. This is the civil fraud trial. I, I'm really, and I have to apologize to you people. I'm sorry. There are so many court cases. There are a lot. And there's two gag orders. I mean, you're talking about one. It's very one. difficult. And we really, I, I'm sorry to, to be, it's, it's tough. It's tough to keep all this straight in your head. I have a difficult time, and it's my job. Anyway, today's Trump's lawyers filed papers arguing, quote, silencing a presidential candidate's core political speech at the height of his political pan campaign is the essence of censorship. I mean, they have a point, but by the same token, he does say things that put people's lives uh, in danger. 
He is he has gotten more leeway than almost any criminal defendant. I'm not saying with similar circumstances there have never been cir similar circumstances, but any criminal defendant who was making these kinds of statements would almost certainly see some kind of a gag or and see some kind of a crackdown from a judge. If and not see jail time. Kind of, or see jail or see fines. And he has actually gotten an enormous amount of leeway. Now, the circumstances are what they are. He is he is the front running candidate for the Republican nomination. And so it is in the, against the backdrop of a political campaign, although it's a campaign he chose to run. Uh, but I, it's not surprising he's doing it that way. You're seeing every time that one of these gag orders is stayed and a, a judge sets it aside pending another decision, he immediately starts making the same attacks that he had right. been barred from doing before. And I think he thinks that plays to his advantage. And the idea that this clerk has anything to do, I mean, the judge is the person making these decisions. The judge is the one calling the shots. Not this woman, but he loves to attack women. Young women, especially. I think that I think that there is a lot that is very different in the New York State trial than there is going to be in the federal trial. One last that. thing: the man that violently beat former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband Paul with a hammer was found guilty in federal court. David DePap now faces decades in prison, as well as the state trial where charges include attempted murder. And Trump continues to make light of the attack. Here's just one example. Who will stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi, who ruined San Francisco? How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? I mean, the guy is going to be charged for attempted murder. What is, what is remotely funny about that? Uh, Trump finds a punchline in a lot of violence. This is not the first time we have seen it. We have seen him glorifying violence since his first campaign. It has now become so mainstreamed that it almost doesn't resonate, although it is very jarring to hear people laughing at that line. And to your point, he is making fun of somebody who received a really dangerous and potentially life-threatening injury during a home invasion. If the same thing was done to Donald Trump and anyone dared to make a joke about it, you'd never hear the end of it. I think that is one of the things that is even worse now than it was in 16 or 20, 100%. which is the weaponization uh, of, his, of his rhetoric. I think everything is treated by him as fair game in a way that is even more expansive than it was then.